Nigeria, the heart of West Africa, and with 230 million inhabitants plus, it has the largest population in the whole of Africa and the sixth largest in the world. From Nollywood remaining in the top three biggest movie industries and Afrobeat music setting trends and influencing music even in the West, these are just some of the reasons Nigeria earns its tag as the giant of Africa. With 250 plus ethnic groups and 500 languages, Nigeria is one of the most diverse countries on the continent. Having been colonised by the British in the 19th century, Nigeria gained its independence in 1960, but remains a country still part of the Commonwealth. Now, as a veteran soldier and the founder of his passion project, the Invictus Games, which started in 2014, Nigeria would be the first country that Prince Harry and Duchess Meghan would visit in an official capacity since stepping back from being senior working royals in 2020. With an expression of interest from Nigeria to perhaps host the Games one day, Harry and Meghan would be visiting on the invitation of the Nigerian Ministry of Defence. And so, this would be an official visit that was crucially different from the ones before, when they were funded by the public. They would not be visiting as royals representing the monarchy or brand Britain, but instead they will be representing themselves as independently financed royals and without any of the royal machinery, staff and royal PR to support them. Now with other non-working members of the royal family conducting visits to other countries and attracting mild but only national media coverage, the announcement of this visit for the Sussexes did the very opposite and captured the attention of global media at large, with all eyes on Prince Harry and Duchess Meghan throughout the three-day tour. Whilst royalist media agents would dub this not a royal tour, they would prove, however, to give it the attention as if it were. And it was those royal reporters, now on the outside, with no access to Prince Harry and Duchess Meghan, that previously followed and covered their tours, singing their praises, just like this one from 2019. Meghan and Harry arrived in Morocco tonight on a commercial flight from London, which delivered them to Casablanca more than an hour later than scheduled. The Foreign Office is using the Sussexes to strengthen ties with Morocco. It's the most stable country in a region of instability. So by sending Harry and Meghan, Britain has dispatched its most powerful diplomatic weapon from its royal armoury. Diplomatic dynamite. Indeed, as that royal reporter alluded to, having earned a reputation that their fellow senior royals had failed to achieve, particularly with visits to black and brown countries of the Commonwealth. You can even um, use your, uh, let's say, diplomatic influence to, you know, build bridges in achieving the reparatory justice that we are seeking here in the Caribbean. Do you want me to press that button or is it? <laughs> <laughs> what happens if I press that button? <laughs> um, thank you, Prime Minister. Thank you for those, those remarks. I, I wasn't keeping notes, so I'm not going to give you a, 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 a complete repulse. And with some tours by other royals garnering bad reviews for being out of touch and then being dubbed disaster. And uh, we are moving on. On the other hand, as working royals, Prince Harry and Meghan had consistently shown an innate ability to smooth and charm wherever they were sent on their tours. Carrying out up to 72 engagements in one tour while Meghan was pregnant, this winning combination saw them labelled rock stars. A rock star vibe. People screamed when she came out of the car. It's just, yeah, I just, you just don't see this with the royal family. Harry and Meghan drew crowds that their royal peers could only dream of. Their balcony moment was something straight out of a movie and worth waiting for in the rain. Yet, this would end up being a thorn in their side as we later heard their story of a jealousy that set in within the family 
and caused resentment towards them behind palace walls. And all the rest of the family, they were, they were, they were really welcoming. But it really changed after the Australia tour, after our South Pacific tour. That was our first tour. But it was also, it was also the first time that the family got to see how well she is at the job. I started to understand what our continued reality was going to look like. What? But as Prince Harry and Duchess Meghan accepted the invitation to Nigeria and prepared for this visit to promote Invictus and all that goes with it, including mental health, and with Meghan's discovery of her own personal connection with Nigeria, the question on everyone's lips was whether they could recreate their magic from their previous tours on this smaller scale visit. This is Harry and Meghan coming to Nigeria. Abuja, a purpose-built city taken over from Lagos as the capital of Nigeria in 1991. It is one of the wealthiest urban areas in Africa, and with a cost of living that is more expensive than the rest, it plays home to some of the richest people in the continent. Located in the center of Nigeria and viewed as culturally, ethnically, and religiously neutral, its motto, center of unity was to serve as a reminder that it was chosen in the hope of it being the United Central City. Harry and Duchess Meghan landed in Abuja, Nigeria on Friday the 10th of May and they hit the ground running. In the early afternoon they arrived at the Lightweight Academy which is a group of schools consisting of a creche, a nursery, a primary, a junior and a senior secondary school. On arrival they received a very warm welcome from Lightweight Academy staff, including the school principal and Afam Onyema, who is the CEO of the Jenko Foundation, which is currently in partnership with Prince Harry and Duchess Meghan's Archwell Foundation. As a part of this partnership, Prince Harry and Duchess Meghan have provided school girls across Nigeria with school bags, school supplies and menstrual health products. The girls at the Lightweight Academy showed their appreciation to their visitors by gifting Prince Harry and Duchess Meghan with traditional African necklaces. Their welcome also included traditional Nigerian dances before Prince Harry and Duchess Meghan met with the school children, although that would not be the last time they saw those traditional dances. It was inevitable that Prince Harry and Duchess Meghan would meet the nursery kids as they loved children.
And from the looks of it, it seems like they were having more fun than the kids themselves. And then Harry and Meghan spoke to the older children in the school who were keen to keep them entertained this time around. This visit wasn't just about listening and learning and playing with the kids. Prince Harry and Duchess Meghan were fully involved. As an expansion to their partnership with the Gene Co Foundation, Prince Harry and Duchess Meghan were participating and leading the school's first mental health summit. Thank you so much for that warm welcome. We're so honored to be here with all of you. I think before we even start talking about this very special mental health summit, we have got to acknowledge those amazing dance moves. <laughs> I think uh, my husband was excited to jump up and join you, but we resisted the urge this one time. I'll let you please start with um, some thoughts on why it's so important for us to be here. Hello everybody, it is fantastic to be here in Nigeria with you all and to be here at the school for our first visit. Hi. After the light-hearted introductions, the conversation turned a little more serious to a topic close to Prince Harry and Meghan's heart. Harry starting first really wanted to drive home some key mental health messages of support. And there is no shame to be able to acknowledge that today is a bad day, okay? That you woke up this morning feeling sad, that you left school feeling stressed, that you've lost a loved one in your family and you don't know who to turn to or who to speak to. All of these things you may have been led to believe are not for conversation. We are here today to tell you that that is not the case. Every single one of those things is completely normal. It is a human reaction, whether it's grief, stress, whatever the feeling is. It comes from experience that you have had. You can have it. She can have it. I can have it. They can have it. Every single one of us is likely to have it on any given day. So if, if you take anything away from today, just know that mental health affects every single person in the entire world. And the more you talk about it, the more you can kick stigma away, far, far away, into the long grass. And then everybody will have the opportunity to be able to share. Much to the delight of the school kids in attendance, Duchess Meghan couldn't help but compliment Prince Harry for his wise words. Do you see why I'm married to him? He's so smart. He's so smart and so inspiring because he speaks the truth. Prince Harry has been an advocate for talking about mental health and talking the stigma out of it. It certainly was bold, needed and inspiring to kickstart discussions like this in a school in Nigeria where mental health is often seen as taboo. Afam Onyema, their partner at Jinko, talked to a Nigerian news show about how the Duke and Duchess got on board with the Mental Health Summit and how so little funding in Nigeria is put towards mental health. Of the money going to health for Nigeria, less than 1% is devoted to mental health. 
So, and you imagine that very little of that's actually trickling down to teens and youth. Mm -hmm. And so we're dealing with a real crisis and so many people have been at the forefront of this and first and foremost amongst them have been the Duke and Duchess, uh, Prince Harry and Meghan. And so when they approached us with the idea of extending this to Nigeria and building out our partnership, we were just so honored to be associated with them and to collaborate to bring this very important vital issue to the youth in Nigeria who we love and who we serve every single day. Hmm. He expressed quite strongly that the involvement of the Duke and Duchess makes such a difference to the children and helps so much with increasing awareness and understanding of mental health. That, um, and Prince Harry could not have said it better. Because it's okay not to be okay. They mentioned that it's okay not to be okay, so it was really inspirational. It's amazing how people will go, oh, me too. Like, yeah. I, didn't, I thought I was the only one. I thought something was wrong with me. And when you have people of the caliber and with the, with the national, international following of the Duke and Duchess, it just opens up people to say, well, if they're, if they're feeling it, and if they're so expressive and so courageous and mm -hmm. talking about it and supporting it, then I can come forward. And mm -hmm. so we saw that at our summit. We had so many youth there who... We just they began the summit quiet and nervous and not knowing much about mental health. And mm -hmm. by the end, they were asking these complex, dynamic questions about mm -hmm. their own mental health and their psyche. And they're really challenging us and the facilitators. My sister, yeah. Unche, who's a board director, mm -hmm. um, Jenko, is with me. And we were just startled by how, how thoughtful they're being. Mm -hmm. And we realized, my goodness, these hungry minds need to be fed. Mm -hmm. And so it just justified the need for having this summit and mm -hmm. we're going to have them all across the country and thanks to the partnership with the Archwell Foundation we're going to have them on an ongoing basis. Mm -hmm. So It is clear that Prince Harry and Duchess Meghan made an impact and they left an impression on the school kids with their genuineness and their relatability through little anecdotes including one referencing their daughter Princess Lilibet Diana. So our daughter Lily, she's much much tinier than, than you guys. She's about to turn three. And uh, a few weeks ago, she looked at me, and she could just see the reflection in my eyes, and she goes, Mama, I see me in you. Now, she was talking really literally, but I hung on to those words in a very different way, and I thought, yes, I do see me in you, and you see me in you, but as I look around this room, I see myself in all of you as well. So it is a complete honor to have our first visit to Nigeria, be here with all of you. We believe in you, we believe in your futures, we believe in your ability to continue to tell your stories and to just be honest with each other. There is no need to suffer in silence. Hi. Of course, that comment there of not suffering in silence is not insignificant given the Duchess's experience as a working royal. I really tried to adopt this British sensibility of a stiff upper lip. <laughs> it has its, you know, it has its I advantages, tried, I, I guess. I tried, I really tried, um, but I think that what that does internally is probably really damaging. And her very personal revelations of the poor mental health that she experienced in that part of her life. I just didn't want to be alive anymore. And that was a very clear and real and frightening constant thought. Despite criticism from some quarters for sharing her story, the Duchess continues to demonstrate conviction in her beliefs and that she will not be discouraged from encouraging others to speak out to get help when they need it. After the summit, the kids got to take selfies with them. They even had copies of Prince Harry's best-selling memoir, Spare, for him to sign. That might be worth a bit in a few years' time. I cannot, like, I cannot put it into words how it feels to meet the Duke and the Duchess. Oh my God, the Duchess. Oh my God, they're, they're, they're wonderful people. Just, you know, on camera, they're good. But in person, Holy moly. Meeting the Duke and the Duchess today made me feel like I could do anything. And that's what I'm hoping to continue doing, like 
always tell, always continuing with the mindset that I can do anything as long as I set my mind to it. I'm very happy he signed the book. He said, believe in making the change. And I feel that's something I'm going to hold close to me for to the end of time. Well, it was clear that as the Duke and Duchess's visit at the Academy came to an end, their words of wisdom really hit home with the students. And once again, the impact of their visit was fully recognised, including from the school principal herself. The visit of the Duke and Duchess of Success means a lot to us in this school because it highlights their, first of all, their partnership with our partners, Jenko. It highlights the fact that they think mental health is very important. And that's a message that we all wish we could pass along to our young ones. So as a school, definitely, it has opened the door for us to be able to have a very healthy conversation on the issue of mental health. The next stop in the afternoon was a trip to the defence headquarters. Now, this engagement was a very important one because, of course, it was on the accepted invitation of the Chief of Defence Staff, that is from General Christopher Musa, that Prince Harry and Duchess Meghan were in Nigeria in the first place. Here at the Defence Headquarters, in acknowledgement of Prince Harry, not just as a prince, but as a genuine army veteran himself, he was honoured with a veteran's welcome. Now the guards would be dismissed into the guard room to pave the way for the special guest to make his way to the facade of the defense headquarters. But sliding back into his military ways, they gave him some work to do too when they asked him to inspect his fellow soldiers. Notice here that Prince Harry is wearing a dark green suit and Duchess Meghan a white one. So obviously paying homage to the green, white, green flag of Nigeria. They met with the soldiers and military wives who were dressed in traditional Nigerian attire called Ashoke. Before departing, Prince Harry and Duchess Meghan wrote in the guest book. Harry wrote, thank you for welcoming us to your beautiful country. Together we can heal our troops. Meghan wrote, with gratitude for your support of the Invictus community and for welcoming me home. Kuduna, located in the northwest of Nigeria, it's the fourth largest and third most populous state in the country. And like other states in Nigeria, Kaduna is blessed with the largest number of military institutions and elite military establishments. The last stop of the day was a solo engagement for Prince Harry to Kaduna, where he was met by Governor Ubasani. If you can't make it out, the welcome band are chanting the words, Prince Harry and Meghan, welcome to Kaduna State.
After the typical Nigerian welcome that Prince Harry was met with at every engagement, he, Prince Harry, shared why he was there and apologised for not bringing his wife. Having founded the Invictus Games over 10 years ago, Nigeria was the first African nation to join last year in Germany with 10 fantastic human beings. And as we had a conversation with the Chief of De uh, Defence Staff a few hours earlier, he acknowledged the smiles on their faces and the fact that that opportunity, that moment, being part of the Invictus community, put a smile back on their face. So when you talk about lifting the spirits, that is what we are here to do. And we will build on that morale and show that anyone that is caught in the line of fire, that their life, despite injury, is not over. If there's one thing that Prince Harry most likely learned is that most Nigerians must have been born on a Friday because they were loving and giving and give they did. He received so many gifts from Governor Uba Sani, including a painting of him with his beloved mother and one with his beloved wife on their wedding day. He was also given and adorned with Nigerian attire for men called Agbada, and he even tried this on. Exuding the spirit of Princess Diana, still in Kuduna, Prince Harry's next engagement was at the 44 Nigerian Army Reference Hospital, where he met with injured troops. This is a reference hospital where we evacuate our personnel that are critically wounded. So he's, he's here to see them, to say hello to them, and to also interact with them. There is no doubt that he is his mother's son. And it has since been noted by many that Prince Harry often echoes the kind of energy, philanthropic spirit and connection with people that his own mother, Princess Diana, did in her life's work. While at the hospital, Prince Harry met a 24-year-old trailblazing figure in the Nigerian military. She, having achieved the distinction of becoming the first ever Nigerian female officer to graduate from a school, that Prince Harry had his own affiliation with. This was Princess Oluchuku Awowo, who was a recent graduate of Sandhurst Military School back in the UK. This is the very same school that Prince Harry did his training at himself. Princess has returned to the Nigerian military to work in the intelligence team. Clearly, this was of some significance because it was posted on Harry's Archwell Foundation webpage at sussex.com that he was especially pleased to be able to congratulate fellow graduate Princess in person. Now, that concluded the end of the first of the three days in Nigeria for the Duke and Duchess of Sussex. But there is no doubt that Prince Harry left his mark in Kaduna as Governor Ubasani spoke highly of him, and Arise News reported on this glowing feedback, the governor described the prince as a symbol of courage, perseverance, compassion, and the one of humanity, and commended him for his selfless service to the United Kingdom and humanity. I think it's safe to say that he liked Prince Harry. Four engagements, two states, and that's a wrap for day one. Back in Abuja, the second day of the tour was another packed day of engagements for the Sussexes. In the afternoon, Prince Harry took part in a sit-in volleyball game organised by Team Nigeria Unconquered. They are a local charitable organisation that supports wounded, injured or sick servicemen and women. And this was born out of the Invictus movement. City volleyball is one of the many sports the organisation relies on to aid the recovery of the wounded men and women, and it has been a core sport for the Invictus Games since 2014. 
At the 2023 Invictus Games in Dusseldorf, Germany, Prince Harry and Duchess Meghan came to watch Nigeria play their sitting volleyball match against Ukraine. And what a reception they received from what can be assumed were mainly Nigerian spectators or those supporting Nigeria that they were sat amongst. A rowdy reception, especially for Meghan, who having previously disclosed she was part Maltese on her father's side, who is Caucasian, revealed on an episode of her Archetype podcast that she was 43% Nigerian from her mother's side. I was incredibly excited to sit down with Ziwe, a Nigerian-American comedian, actress, and writer. I just had my genealogy done a couple years ago. What? What are you? 43% Nigerian. No way! <laughs> now, whoa, Oh my gosh, are you really serious? Yeah. <gasps> this is huge. Ibo Yoruba, do we know? So I, I mean, I'm going to start to dig deeper into all this because anyone that I've told, especially Nigerian women, are just like, <gasps> What? This is huge for our community. No, honestly, you do look like a Nigerian. You look like my Aunt Uzo. So this is great. Oh my goodness, Uzo. <laughs> Shout out. And perhaps the supporters at Dusseldorf's attempt to claim Meghan away from Prince Harry was an indication that she would be warmly welcomed in Nigeria too. I think the Nigerians have taken her to their heart anyway. Bosa! 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 But also, judging from what Prince Harry said there at the opening ceremony, it sounded like the feeling was mutual for Meghan. Now, I'm not saying we play favourites in our home, but since my wife discovered that she is of Nigerian descent, it's likely to get a little bit more competitive this year. It is true that Meghan's genealogy revelation brought her closer to the Nigerian community, who really did embrace her back in Nigeria, genuinely with open arms. The rowdy reception she was met with in Dusseldorf was echoed by Nigerian fans at the sit-in volleyball engagement in Abuja. Oh my God, <laughs> the couple were surrounded by fans who dressed in beautiful traditional Nigerian clothes in the Invictus colours. Here Prince Harry and Duchess Meghan are coming into the court and as was the case for most of their engagements there was a buzz and an air of excitement but with this not being a royal tour for the monarchy royal rotor reporters normally attending to control the reporting were not present instead Prince Harry and Meghan did things their own fresh and inclusive way this was by allowing local Nigerian press to have full access to follow and report on their visit. And as you can see, they were enthusiastic with this opportunity. Prince Harry got stuck in and joined the training session for a game of volleyball. He played as the captain of Nigeria on Concord. And it sounds like they were both honoured and obviously excited to have him play with them. Woo! 
When it comes to Prince Harry's impact, every day this was felt. And here are some testimonies from some of the wounded veterans themselves. This initiative is very, very fantastic because it makes me to understand that, yes, I can actually achieve what I couldn't achieve before in my life. We thank them for, their, for all the effort they are putting to put laughter and smiles in the faces of all the sick and the wounded soldiers. This means a lot to us. In the afternoon, Prince Harry and Duchess Meghan were invited to a reception with military families and the Widows Association. Then honoured the sacrifices made by service members as they shared their stories of recovery and preparation for the Invictus Games 2025. The audience there heard testimonies from wounded warriors, included Lance Corporal Peacemaker Azubulum, who thanked the Duke for making the Games a reality and both the Duke and the Duchess for inspiring him. I'm being inspired by Prince Iron Mega, by his vision of the Invictus Games. Because I now have a proposed life, then I now see the ability in my disability. I now see it that there is nothing I can do if I wish to do so. That the most important thing is the mindset of the soldier, which means that we are a victim, which means we are undefeatable. Peacemaker showed his resilience and determination way back in Vancouver, Whistler, in February 2024 for the one year to go Invictus event there. He met both Prince Harry and Duchess Meghan on the mountain while training, and they too were inspired by him. Um, Peacemaker, you're not here today, are you? No. I'm sure everyone's read about Peacemaker from the Nigerian team. He is quite remarkable. He spent two days up on the mountain. He had to be escorted off the mountain in between his uh, training sessions. As he would have stayed up there if he could. But I'll tell you what, the smiles on the faces that I've seen over the last few days it proves why we do what we do. Testimonies were also heard from Lance Corporal Dean on Wuchikwa. Dean's story begins in 2021 when he lost his arms from trying to defuse a bomb which had been planted by Boko Haram. He found that the Invictus Games had changed his life and has given him a sense of purpose which is fundamentally the aim of the Invictus Games. I never knew that I myself would be standing here because my thought as a den was probably killing myself. Since I have no hands, one eye, and just 25% of hearing remaining, it's more like, why am I leaving? But uh, after the Invictus found me, I, my first endeavor to Colorado last year, I get to notice that uh, it is not only I, I have other people who are like me. This event showed the impact that Prince Harry is having on the progress that Nigeria is making in caring for its wounded servicemen and women. An exciting presentation on a big screen revealed a 3D tour of the proposed Nigerian Invictus Centre. The idea is that this is to be a haven for physical and mental rehabilitation. And the event concluded with remarks from Prince Harry. There are some significant moments that stand out in my mind. Beginning in the United Kingdom, with the UK, USA, wheelchair basketball and wheelchair rugby. And then in Germany, when we were gifted with the presence of Team Nigeria who danced on stage better than anybody else. And Prince Harry and Meghan never seeming to leave anywhere without gifts found that they received traditional Oshoke outfits to add to their gift collection.
The CEO of Nigerians in Diaspora Commission explained why she was not surprised to learn that Duchess Meghan was partly Nigerian. Prince Harry and Duchess Meghan visited Save the Children at some point during their trip, but it's not clear when. It's likely that this was after the afternoon reception that they attended and a visit that was not formally scheduled in their itinerary. Miss and Harry Mann, their good friend, is a Save the Children ambassador, so this trip seemed fitting. Here, Prince Harry and Duchess Meghan met two young activists fighting for the rights of girls in Nigeria. Every one of us has a role to play through our advocacy, our voices, you know, our financial supports, volunteering. So we hope to see a positive change and a better nation for Nigeria. In the evening, the Duchess of Sussex joined in conversation with Dr Ngozi Nkonjo Iwila, Director General of the World Trade Organization, for an event celebrating female leaders in Abuja. Guests were gifted with an Archwell Foundation tote bag, water bottle, and a copy of a Woman in Leadership book co-authored by Dr. Ngozi Nkonjo Iwila. But beforehand, the doctor had some really nice words to say about Prince Harry and Meghan. I'm so excited to see Meghan. Um, for those of you who don't know her, she's one of the loveliest young women that I've met. And ever since the first time that we got to know each other during the pandemic, I put it up with her with the Duke. And uh, when she said she was coming to Nigeria, but I told her, if you ever want to come to Nigeria, let me know. So when she called me a couple of months ago to say she's coming, I said, we have to make sure you have a good time. Well, firstly, thank you all so much for being here. I'm just flattered and honored and inspired. It has been a whirlwind 24 hours <laughs> since we arrived, and I've very quickly gotten the memo that I need to wear more color so I can fit in with all of you in your incredible fashion. Now, the Megan effect was affecting as usual throughout the tour, and each of the dresses that she wore from day one to day three sold out. That includes this dress, which retailed at $275. However, as has been the case in the past when Meghan has caused an item of clothing to sell out, this one actually crashed the retailer's site. A report about this in Vogue magazine said this. When Uriwe Oleshin Loye logged on to Instagram to see a photo of Meghan Markle wearing one of her eponymous brand dresses while attending a Women in Leadership event in Abuja, Nigeria, last weekend... She couldn't believe it. It's surreal, the Lagos-based designer tells Vogue via Zoom. It means so much. Everything she stands for is in such alignment with the brand. Alessia Noye got to experience the Megan effect firsthand. Interest was so high following her appearance in the red dye dress that Arire's website crashed. Now back up and running, the brand is taking pre-orders for the style. The panel discussion with the doctor was facilitated by Nigerian media mogul Mo Abudu, and she started by focusing on Megan. When, um, when I had done the genealogy and found out about my heritage, the first thing I did obviously was call my mom because I wanted to know if she had any awareness of it. And I think being African American, part of it is really not knowing so much about your lineage, your background, where you come from specifically, and it was exciting for both of us to discover more and understand what that really means. Never in a million years will I understand it as much as I do now. 
in being here, right? Being here. <laughs> and what, what has been echoed so much, really, in the past day by men and women alike is, oh, we weren't surprised when we found out when you were a Nigerian. <laughs> Oh, no, no, no. And, and I say that mostly as a compliment to all of you because what they define as a Nigerian woman is brave, resilient, courageous, powerful, beautiful. And, and every single moment that I hear anyone so far talk about what it means to be a Nigerian woman, it is the most flattering thing to be in that company, to be in your company. As was the case when Duchess Meghan was a working member of the royal family, Meghan continues, like Prince Harry, to show that refreshing ability to answer questions off the cuff with great eloquence, spontaneity and depth in a way not so common with the other royals who prefer to avoid free-speaking panel scenarios. But how do we ensure that... The next generation of women coming have role models to be able to look to. Yeah, in whatever travels I've done, regardless if it's Nigeria or another country around the world, oftentimes when women reach the peak of success, they leave. But you need to come back home. You need to at least be a familiar face for the next generation to say, oh, she looks like me, and I can be that. And I think that is a really key piece in all of it, where success isn't defined by, oh, you've gotten out, you've gone somewhere else. It's defined by, and you still always want to come back home. Because that's how you're going to help shift any sort of generational pattern that might be stifling, especially for young girls who need to see someone who looks like them in that same position of power. So what, but you have come back home. <laughs> With yet another successful event under her belt and other panel discussions during the event, Everyone, including Meghan, got a chance to mix and mingle a little while afterwards. With four engagements done, day two of three was a wrap. Lagos, the former capital of Nigeria, is said to have a population somewhere between 17 and 21 million making it the most popular city in the whole of Nigeria and a major economic hub, significantly influencing commerce, entertainment, technology, education, politics, tourism, art and fashion in Africa. Nigeria has the fourth highest GDP in Africa and Lagos alone generates a 30% share of this. Prince Harry and Meghan touched down in Lagos for the last day of their visit. They were greeted, as some would say, Niger style at the airport and were given a hearty welcome by Alan Onyema, founder of Air Peace Airline, who flew them from Abuja to Lagos. And of course, Prince Harry and Duchess Meghan were entertained by those traditional Nigerian dancers that they've become so accustomed to on this trip. You will see that Megan is wearing a beautiful wrapper skirt, which is part of an Ashoke outfit that she was given as a present at the military reception that she and Prince Harry attended the day before. Megan styling the wrapper with a white Carolina Herrera shirt was different, in a good way, and it seemed to set a new trend. The skirt was being sold by a clothing line called Regalia, and modelled on the site by legendary Nollywood actress Iriti Doyle, who recreated the look Meghan wore on the final day. The skirt was then named the Meghan Wrap, and of course, it sold out.
On to their first engagement. Prince Harry and Duchess Meghan headed for a Lepardieu Grammar School basketball court. This basketball court was built by the Giants of Africa organization. And this is a charity that Prince Harry and Duchess Meghan are working very closely with that holds similar values to that of the Invictus Games Foundation as it uses sport, specifically basketball, to empower and enrich the lives of African youth. Welcomed onto the court by the founder of the Giants of Africa, Masai Ujiri, who is also the president of the Toronto Raptors and had led this NBA team to their most successful period in their history, well, he took to the podium to thank Prince Harry and Duchess Meghan for their partnership and share an exciting details of new developments with it coming soon. To the Duke and Duchess of Sussex, Prince Harry, Princess Meghan. This is such an honor, incredible honor for us to welcome you here. And not only back to Africa, but to Nigeria. Nigeria is the heart of Africa. We all know that. Yes. yes. When Nigeria moves, Africa moves, right? We are so proud, so proud uh, to welcome you here, uh, for you to take this time and come and do all what you guys are doing. We have, have an unbelievable partnership because everything they do is the same thing we want to do with Giants of Africa, which is unite communities, build young children, uplift them, give them opportunity, give opportunity, and ours is through sports. So with this unique partnership, the Archwell Foundation is partnering with us, donating to build another court like this in Abuja. So God bless you. God bless you, Harry. God bless you, Megan. Thank you. Next up, some entertainment from the kids before Harry and Megan's speeches to them. The power of sport can change lives. It brings people together and creates community. And there are no barriers, which is the most important thing. So, myself, my wife, if you walked in, I think you saw that um, knowledge is power, which is a very, very true thing. And it's wonderful to see each and every one of you here today sitting on this court. I know that you're ready to go. Thank you, and good afternoon, everybody. Yeah. Good afternoon. We are thrilled to be here. I will say on a personal note, I lived in Toronto for seven years, went to quite a few Raptors games, and that was the first time I heard of Science in Africa. So we're going to talk about Full Circle. Never did I think that we would be able to be here all these years later, supporting the expansion of this incredible organization through our foundation, the Artful Foundation. So we are just so grateful. We're proud of all the work that you're doing. For everyone who helped bring this event together today, thank you for the media who's here covering it to expand the knowledge for everyone to know how incredible the work is that they are doing here. Thank you for being here to cover that. And to all of you, we just can't wait to see how well you play. Don't tempt me to try to do any basketball. My husband is the athletic one. <laughs> but thank you and we're happy to be here and let's have a fun afternoon. Megan is not wrong here. Prince Harry is definitely the athletic one as he has showed us many times before, including in his interview with James Corden. And he's also adventurous too. Don't make international <laughs> news, okay? As he showed us in Vancouver for his Invictus One Year To Go event. Oh man, that was really awesome. However, the Nigerian heat may have been a bit too much for Prince Harry to handle as he only managed a short time participating in the basketball drills before heading for some respite on the sidelines. Only to be dragged back onto the court by Masai. And Prince Harry did not disappoint. 
Who said white men can't jump? Or rather, red-headed princes can't jump? With their first engagement done and dusted in Aleppo Jew, they headed for the Delbara, a five-star hotel that opened in November 2023. Now throughout Prince Harry and Duchess Meghan's stay in Nigeria, there were a few people that moved with them throughout the majority of the time there in all their engagements. This included General Christopher Musa, who invited them to Nigeria and also with his wife, and at some point, Antonius Jimmy and Stanley Uzochuku. Stanley is the owner of the Delbara Lagos, and this is where Prince Harry and Duchess Meghan would use as their base. And Jimmy Antonius is the Delbara's food manager and seemed to have really taken to Prince Harry and Duchess Meghan after spending much time speaking with the couple quite animatedly. Antonius said of his meeting on his Instagram account, meeting Prince Harry and Meghan, Duke and Duchess of Sussex at Sussex Royal was an honour and privilege beyond words. Their influence has touched countless lives, including mine, in profound ways. I'm humbled and grateful for the opportunity to express my admiration in person and to have a very fruitful conversation with their grace. After a quick change, Prince Harry and Duchess Meghan met more people that were keen to see them and headed on their way to their second engagement, which, thanks to Stanley Uzochuku, was the Delbara, where a fundraiser for the Invictus Unconquered team took place and members of the Nigerian elite were invited. <laughs> event for wounded soldiers and veterans. This event right now is playing host to the Duke and Duchess of Sussex. And any moment from now, both of them will be walking out those doors and they'll be able there to see uh, the wounded veterans. And uh, just any moment from now, you see. This Nigerian presenter goes on to point out Prince Harry and Duchess Meghan leaving the venue to greet some of the wounded soldiers. And this will be before they head off to their next engagement. In this jam-packed day, Prince Harry and Duchess Meghan left the event to make a quick stop in Marina to visit the governor of Lagos, Babajide Samwa Olu, at his residence. <laughs> Thank you. 
and here they are arriving at the governor's house. <laughs> This yellow dress that Meghan wore was meaningful and carried so much sentiment, especially as it was Mother's Day. And this Carolina Herrera dress that she's wearing here is the same dress that she wore for Prince Archie's first birthday and for her pregnancy reveal for Princess Lilibet Diana. The governor, Samuel Olu, welcomed Prince Harry and Duchess Meghan to his Lagos home and shared some facts about his residence with them. So, this photographer now. Steps here? Yes. You're welcome to Lagos. You're welcome to the center of excellence. You're welcome to the state of aquatic splendor. You're welcome to the commercial, economic, political, entertainment capital of our country. Megan's for seven cents throughout the visit yet more gifts were given to them by the governor who explained the meaning behind each gift so this is this is huge you know this is a masquerade this is a 3d printing this is this is really unique this is only this so it's called a masquerade so it's, it's a traditional mask that comes out. Maybe one in five years. One hasn't come out. So we're probably going to plan one for December or November or something. So it comes out before the stick. It's covered up. Nobody knows who is there until they open their face. You know, they can pray and wish bad things out of the city. But we do it in memory of, you know, late Agoshen. You will see that the Duchess Meghan is wearing a beautiful green Ashoke throw, which went so very well with her dress. This was gifted to Meghan by the governor's wife before they sat down for a chat. Then they went to the garden for a press briefing, photographs and more networking. The governor then took to the podium to share his delight that Prince Harry and Duchess Meghan were in Nigeria. To commend them for the work that they were doing there and the work that they were planning to do in Nigeria and the importance of the Invictus Games and his hope that Nigeria will one day host them. We're honored to have received them at the State House here at Marina. And um, we're excited with all of the ideas and the things that they're planning to do, especially with the office of the Chief of Defense Staff, um, um, General Musa, and his lovely wife that is also here. The Invictus Day that Prince Harry is known for, you know, at what point can we have it in Nigeria? They've been to Kano, they've been to Abuja, here now in Lagos. Um, I'm sure they have their own experience of what Nigeria looks like. And we've extended additional invitation to them that they can always come back, you know, when they want to. The governor seemed to have taken to Meghan and Harry, and again, in respect of Meghan, mentioned her Nigerian heritage, and again tried to claim her for his own tribe, the Yorubas. Also knowing fully well that Meghan has you know, a decent percentage of Nigerian in her, all right? And we've said, we've, we've sort of like agreed that maybe that percentage should stay in Yoruba land. I don't know, right? Um, but, but it's okay. And you can see she's been well attired and her yellow and yellow actually okay, blends so very, very, very well um, today. And I think um, on behalf of, of, of all of us in Lagos, we're excited, we're happy that they found out time to be. We've taken enough shots already. Thank you very much. Thank you.
Then it was back to the Delborough for the continuation of the reception with the creme de la creme of Nigerian society. From businessmen and women, Nigerian entertainers to African royalty, Prince Harry and Duchess Meghan were in the presence of media veterans like Stephanie Coker, music maven Tiwa Savage, and also the Nollywood sweetheart Jackie Appiah. They also met Nigerian heiresses, Nollywood legend Rita Dominic, as well as veteran actresses like Ego Boyo, just to name a few. This attendee shared with Prince Harry how his grandmother, the Queen, and her grandfather met many moons ago when the Queen Elizabeth II visited Nigeria in 1956. Here, Ucha Pedro, founder of Bella Niger, talks to Prince Harry and commends him for the work that he is doing. Prince Harry and Duchess Meghan's presence in Nigeria drew an elite crowd. But of the highest honour, a king from Lagos and three kings from the east were willing to leave their ancient kingdoms to attend a reception to meet the couple, especially Duchess Meghan, who they showered with gifts, just like those three kings from the east showered a certain baby from a thousand years ago. But they also gave Duchess Meghan Nigerian names of significance and huge importance. Three kings, His Eminence Engineer Abera Chuku Oji, Eze Oro of the ancient Orochuku Kingdom, Igwe Alfred Achebe, the Obi of Anicha, and Great Olu of Wari Kingdom. In the naming ceremony put on for Duchess Meghan, His Majesty the Olu of Wari started by saying that it's not easy carrying the weight that she does of inspiring and pathfinding. He said it gets heavy, and that's why he gave her the name from the Wari Kingdom, Oritsa Gemini. That means God's help. <laughs> the Duchess of Sussex's positive impact on Nigerians led to her being honoured with the ceremonial title of Adamazi by his eminence engineer, Ebera Chuku Oji, as a Oro of the ancient kingdom of Orochuku. Adamazi is said to mean daughter of an aristocrat or daughter of an important person, in this case the person gifting it, so daughter of a king, or daughter of the Ibo ancestral palace. Essentially, it's a title which, separate to her title, Princess Henry of Wales, makes her a princess of the ancient kingdom of Orochuku and a senior royal. Her new royal title is denoted on her royal sash, saying Adamazi Omu of Orochuku. Who would have thought Duchess Meghan would continue to collect royal titles outside of Europe? And here, the fourth king from Lagos, the Oluwa of Iwoland, gave Duchess Meghan a chieftaincy title, Olu Omo, which means greatest child. <laughs> Because you can't be taking your weekend or put anything on your head right now. I'm going to be giving you this gift. It's a sign. Uh, please, can you take that from her? It's a sign of uh, giving a chief as a title. And this is our cocoons. And God bless you. He also gave her a name called Ade Tukumbo. It is both a surname and a given name of Yoruba origin, meaning the crown or royalty returns from across the sea or from a foreign land. Later, after the visit, no doubt from Montecito Palace, Duchess Meghan would write her letter of thanks for the titles she received 
presumably to all four kings, but it was this king who would share his letter online. It said, Thank you for your warm welcome in Nigeria. I am deeply humbled by your blessing of the traditional name Adetokombo. I treasure the name and appreciate your trust in me to carry it with grace and dignity. Our visit in Nigeria was important for many reasons, but not least because it gave us an opportunity to explore and understand my heritage, which extends to our children. We look forward to coming back home one day soon. Megan, Duchess of Sussex. The Oluwa of Iwa was clearly enamoured with Duchess Megan at the reception, to the point that he could have offended his wife. But he checked himself quickly there. Good save. You could see that Duchess Meghan was visibly moved as she delivered her speech of thanks. I'm very, very grateful and very humbled. And today's Mother's Day. So it feels appropriate that though, of course, we are missing our children, I'm missing my babies. It feels very appropriate to be in the motherland and amongst family. So thank you so much for the kindness and for these beautiful names. I'm very grateful and we can't wait to come back. Thank you so much. They say family is not always blood. And here, Prince Harry took to the floor to thank his newly extended family. In-laws. <laughs> Skip the protocol because at this point we're all family. Um, I also try to keep this short. Firstly, thank you. Thank you for welcoming my wife and myself to Nigeria. It's our first visit, it certainly won't be our last. Thank you for the naming ceremony. Um, I'm I don't, try, I don't know how I got dragged into that as well, but to be able to witness it. Uh, next to my wife. It, it means a huge amount to both of us, but especially, especially her, so thank you for that. As always, there would be some entertainment, and for this event, it ended with popular Nigerian gospel singer Moses Bliss serenading the couple with his song called For Life. Fun fact, he explained that it was like a dedication from Harry to Meghan, and you might just spot here Harry apparently joking with Meghan that it was him who wrote the words for her. Harry to Meghan. All right. <laughs> From my heart to your ears, I sing these melodies for you. Cause you've touched my heart in so many ways Like I've never felt before Again, during that set of that performance, with its meaningful lyrics, which easily apply to Prince Harry and Duchess Meghan's love story, Meghan did look very moved, and she met with Moses afterwards. On Moses' Instagram, he wrote about the joy of meeting and singing for Prince Harry and Duchess Meghan, and here Meghan expressed her appreciation for his music, which is a moment he said he'd cherish forever. Squeezing in another quick engagement after the reception, 
Prince Harry and Duchess Meghan got to meet past Nigerian recipients of the Diana Award. Then it was off to the last engagement in Lagos and Nigeria. A trip to the polo. Security may be being restricted for them in the UK, but certainly not in Nigeria. The excitement on their arrival is clearly palpable. The Duke and the Duchess were met with a warm welcome by the crowd and the Polo Club president, Mr. Bode Makanjula, and his wife, Moyo. Hi, Megan. How are you? Hi, Harry. All right. Good to see you. Can I send you Yeah, let's see. Hi, Megan. Hi. I said I found another girl like. I ain't no other girl like. She made me a good weight. Make her no good crush. Only you did for my view. You got diamonds on your body when you glow, girl. You don't fall and you don't even know, girl. Spend a lot of my time because you're worth it. Now let my mind it for you. Yeah, yeah. I know, trying to find love, but you don't know. Give me the keys to your combo. Girl, I've been to hold you down. I know you need somebody. I know, you're trying to find love, but you don't know. Give me the keys to your combo. Make I've been to hold you down. Hold you down. Can't find another girl like you. It's like a red carpet when you walk through. You can tell that I really want. So we're, we're very excited to welcome the Duke and Duchess. I'm sure a lot of our guests would have loved to see him on the field, but uh, hopefully we'll have him back again and uh, get him to play some chuckers with us. Polo is a big sport in Lagos, and also one that is very close to Prince Harry's heart. The game played on Prince Harry and Duchess Meghan's visit was for charity. It was a fundraiser, and the two teams were aptly named Duke, being the players in blue, and the Duchess being the players in red. Look, I'm always excited to play polo. Bonus to play in front of a prince, from a prince to another. So welcome to the Sussexes. I hope they enjoyed watching us play polo. Now, it's no surprise that the Duchess won 5-2. Uh, the Duke of uh, Sussex and the Duchess coming to come and celebrate with us uh, means that internationally everybody is aware of the sacrifice Nigerian armed forces have been making and this is good for us because it increases the morale of our troops and once they see that they are being honoured, they are being appreciated, they will be ready to give him more. And before they left for the day, it was more networking and handing out medals to the school children who also play polo. Three days in Nigeria, Abuja, Kuduna and Lagos. And here we have Harry effectively signing out for this event, but also for the visit as a whole. Thank you very much for your wonderful hospitality today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, to begin with, there was that speculation about whether Prince Harry and Duchess Meghan could recreate the magic and the diplomatic dynamite of their previous tours. 
Well, it's so very clear that they did. And they also made an impact, leaving a legacy that they intend to build on. But... Um, and if only this was a royal tour, because it was an actual success. I think it was a great success. I think there's no doubt that... Um, this only... has actually been a roaring success. Uh, no, the visit was most successful. It what felt, point... it, we were discussing earlier, it felt almost presidential <laughs> uh, rather than royal, because, of course, they are not working royals. Um, it, just the most fabulous PR for them both. And it looks like it went very yeah. well. And, you know, overriding uh, view of it is that it was a success. No, absolutely. I suppose that they have to do this sort and it's of thing. Funny, it was like a sort of royal tour. Mm. In... I mean, I watched this stuff there uh, on a peripheral level. Perfectly successful trip. I'm sure they're thrilled. What you're unhappy about is that they've done it so well. But what does that have to do with the debate? Because the point is Harry has a gift and it might make us all feel uncomfortable, but it was there before he left the royal family. Mm -hmm. We often talked about it, Harry's charisma. You can't implant it in someone. You can't force it on someone. But he has not... it and what upsets you is you're seeing it used. After a highly successful but most certainly unofficial <laughs> royal trip to Nigeria at the weekend, Prince Harry and Meghan reminded the world of their popularity. With the King cutting back on his workload and Kate also taking time off treatment, is now the moment to bring the Sussexes back into the royal fold? I just watched their tour in Nigeria, you know, and he started, he becomes the best striker in the world. We've got with that situation with Harry and Meghan. No one else would cheer a, tour, a royal tour like that. They're, they're getting attention no one else can get and they need to buy them back. And when royalists and British far-right commentators, usually so vindictive against them, admit too that the visit was indeed successful, then you know it's because it cannot be denied. How would you describe it? A complete blessing, thank you. How about you? We had a wonderful time, thank you very much for the... Yes, of course we will, the hospitality's been fantastic. Thank you.